Hello everyone and welcome. Make a cup of your favorite drink and get comfortable because this is a wonderful time for news stories from Yellow Cat. Send your own stories in the comments below and maybe they'll be in our new video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet and let's get started. How quickly did you quit your last job and why? Part 3. Once I was trained and certified as a Harley tech, I got a job at a factory in New Jersey. At the time, I lived in Philadelphia. I heard about this dealer from a friend who often bought parts from them and said that they had asked him or anyone he knew if they needed someone to work on bikes. Someone from the school where I graduated also called me to let me know that the dealer had contacted them to say they needed two techs. As I was being interviewed, the dealership owner told me they weren't looking for anyone and didn't understand why the school would have come to them. He told me he would hire me anyway, and I would start by doing simple tasks like changing the oil and tires. When I asked about pay, he said we'd talk about it Monday morning. He said I would start the following Monday. That was a bad sign for me. I was ready to work when I got there Monday morning. I borrowed a truck to bring my tools inside. First thing, I talked to the owner about money. He told me I would get paid $10 an hour. It was 15 years ago, so it wasn't as bad as it sounds, but it was still pretty bad. But it was my first job in the field, so I thought, F it. I had my foot in the door. I asked where my toolbox should go and what bay I should work in. I was told to clean the bathrooms by the owner, who looked very confused and said, I think you're confused about the position. He then led me to a utility closet and gave me a cart full of cleaning supplies. Not at all. I told him no thanks. To be a cleaner, I'd have to work somewhere in Philadelphia where I can make a lot more than $10 an hour. As I walked out the door, the guy looked really confused. There wasn't much time between me and leaving the building. I picked the right thing to do. A few days later, the school called to see if I had ever applied at the dealership. They were calling again to say they were desperate because two more techs had quit. I explained to them what happened, and the rep agreed it sure seemed like I dodged a bullet. I applied to a grocery store chain, starting with all to work in the bakery because I had experience at a corner bakery. It took a few days, but I guess it was only one day. When I was called in for an interview, I said I'd be okay working nights. They hired me as an overnight data entry worker. That sounds good. First few days were just paid computer training, OSHA training, and stuff about the workplace. I'd come in at noon and work for an hour or two each day. Great, easy and nice. But they never told me how much I was getting paid. They knew where I was going to be in the store and what I was going to do, but they didn't tell me. After training was over, they told me to come in the next day at 10 p.m., giving me no time to change my sleep schedule for the night shift. Just a straight day of sleep, and the next day I slept all night. I wish you had told me this a week ago when you knew what I was going to do. When I get there, I look for my manager or the people who are supposed to teach me what to do, but they're not there. This nice guy who wasn't on the team knew what my job was and showed me how to do it, which is to change the price tags on each and every item every day, and not in an easy way like at Target. Before and during the computer training, this was not at all what the job posting said it would be. There's been 30 minutes. He tells me not to tell my boss that he trained or talked to me because she doesn't like him and it could get me in trouble. That's when the red flags really began to show. My boss, who told me to be there at 10, and the rest of the team finally show up an hour after I was supposed to. Good. As she says sorry for being late, she tells me again what the guy earlier told me to do, etc. It's okay, it happens all the time. Go to 1am. It's break and lunchtime, but no one told me when. I go get a snack for lunch. Sorry, the cash registers close at midnight and don't open again until we do. Okay, I'm effed on food. Red flag number whatever. Thanks for not telling me. I'm tired. I normally go to bed at 11 p.m. As soon as lunch was over, I was put where I had been planned for the past week. Can you guess where? The cold storage area. Making changes to all the price tags without a coat or gloves on. 
We're sorry we didn't tell you ahead of time to bring those. We don't have any that you can use, and the registers are closed, so you can't buy any either. It's true that I hate being cold and can't do anything when it's that cold, but I keep going. Now fast forward to 5 a.m. She comes in and tells me I'm too slow. The cold's making it so hard for me to move my fingers. They're not frostbitten, but just weak from the cold. I can't wait until my shift ends at 6 a.m. When 6 a.m. comes around, she asks me if I can stay until my work is done. It's likely that I wouldn't have been done until 10 a.m. I say sorry and that my ride is here, but he wasn't. I lied. She gets mad because of an upcoming audit, which is probably why she was so disorganized and forgot to tell me anything she knew a week ago. After leaving, I tell her it's not going to work out that same day. I sent in my college application the next day and everything went well. I found out that the pay was $10 when I got my check. I work in IT. During my job search, I was offered a job at ADP, which is a payroll company. At that time, I had a lot of experience with IT, desk side support, the help desk, and other things. I was told the job was talked about a lot during the whole hiring process. The company asked me a lot of IT-related questions during the interview. Good, great job. I'm offered the job of help desk analyst. Simple stuff. When I get there on my first day, I'm shown around the building and told to look at the IT department across the hall. The tour then continues to cubicles that aren't in IT. Oh no. They begin to talk about the job. It's sale calls from strangers. I don't understand what I'm asking the manager, so I explain what I was doing in sales before I was hired for the help desk. He said something about the job being in IT. He went on to talk about a cold call sales job in more detail. I was there for four hours and was really lost for most of that time. I skipped lunch and went home. The person who was consulting called me and was very angry, which I thought was funny when I was 22 and not very mature. Then he said he wasn't going to pay me for the four hours I worked and that I would never work in IT again. There were a few back and forths, but I finally got my $60 check. Since I still work in IT after more than 20 years, I was able to avoid being blacklisted by the small tech systems recruiter who made that threat. I told people in the Chicago area to stay away from both companies like the plague. What was the most insane event that happened to you as a homeowner in an HOA? Part 3. I have three. Two about me and one about my neighbor. I chose all the bells and whistles for my dream house and then moved into a neighborhood that was still being built. The garbage truck broke the trash can sometime around two years after I moved in. The trash company replaced it, but the trash company changed the color and style of the cans they gave us between setting up the trash account and the accident. My HOA told me that my trash can wasn't allowed and that I couldn't leave it on the street on trash day because it looked bad. I went to the city sanitation office and told them what was going on. They told me that they didn't keep the old cans in stock and switched to the new ones when the old ones ran out. The HOA wouldn't budge, telling me I had to have the same kind of can as everyone else. I had to take a letter from them back to them. When it wasn't trash day, everyone put their can on the same side of their house. That's why I had to put the new can in the backyard, wheel it around the house just as the trash truck arrived, and then wheel it back to the backyard right away. I had to tell my boss ahead of time that I could do this every Monday. The second time, I had a Chevy SUV from 1988 that was four years old. This was because I built the house in 2002. A letter from the HOA told me that my car, which was washed and had tire dressing put on it once a week and had no dents, scratches, or pain flaws, was an eyesore and couldn't be parked in my driveway. The letter said it was broken or a junker. Even though I lived in a neighborhood with Mercedes, BMWs, and Range Rovers, it was by no means junk. That meant I had to park my truck in the garage and play musical cars with my wife every time I had to leave. The third one was for my neighbor. 
He hired someone to mow his lawn until he could fix his lawn mower or buy a new one. He hired someone to do the normal thing, which is to park the truck on the street while they mow the lawn. The homeowners association HOA shows up and tells the lawn care service that they can't park on the street. Instead, they have to park outside the community because the work truck and trailer detracted from the classy and elegant stature of the community. They called the police when he wouldn't go. I ended up selling the house and moving out because of 14 million other stupid reasons all related to the HOA. I bought a house and refused to look at any houses that had anything to do with an HOA while I was looking. Roof work that's against the law and an attempt to hide it, the HOA roofers, let's call them Vendor E, change the shingles. Vendor E sent in a change order saying that the plywood below is rotting and needs to be changed. This was okayed by the HOA on July 7th, 2020. The vendor E forgot to get the city permit for the re-roofing work, even though our city needs one to replace the plywood layer. It rained that day, which means that vendor E did something wrong with the change order, which caused water damage to my unit and six others. When I got home from work on Friday, I called the HOA's emergency line to report water damage. I'm an essential employee who works in the office sometimes as needed. There was a six inch leak in the living room and water had been sitting on the floor for at least eight hours. Someone from vendor E came in and ruined my carpet by putting something that looked like black tar all over my floor and hallway. He then said he would fix it. He was gone, the drip stopped and nothing else happened. It began to drip again the next day in the kitchen and the bedroom. But weekend is here. No one came then. The living room leak got bigger by more than two feet. The HOA emergency line just told me that since your house was built in 1966 and has asbestos in the walls, they can't do anything. Try to keep things dry. Vendor E planned an abatement for my place two months late, October 21, 2020, going with a vendor G that the HOA suggested. I asked HOA for a copy of the contract, change order, or agreement between HOA and Vendor E that says Vendor E will pay for the damage. Four times in the last two months. It's not been with me. I asked for hotel and compensation. No, they said. It took them 1.5 months of fighting before they agreed to pay for two nights of hotel stays. Since Vendor E has a clear conflict of interest, I asked the second opinion vendor and the third opinion vendor for a proper scope of work and an estimate of the cost. They were supposed to do this within 60 days of the damage happening, but they didn't. So they told me I can call my own vendor in, but if my vendor quotes more than Vendor E, I have to pay the difference. Asbestos was found in the air at my place on Wednesday, so I asked for a copy of the clean air test to make sure. They only paid for my hotel until Wednesday. Vendor E didn't answer until Friday, telling me they'd send a copy as soon as they got it. My ceiling's left open, and I can see black wet spots and mold growing on it. It's 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Seller E texted me that there's no mold and that it looks dry, but there's no proof. The HOA is currently being kept quiet, and they haven't said when or if they'll get bids from licensed vendors. It's been kept inside by both Vendor E and the HOA, who won't call their insurance. My friend told me it would cost at least 25 k to fix the uneven floors, paint, deal with mold, asbestos, and other fun things. Now that's just my unit. I won't talk about the other five. Everything's pushed to one side of the unit, making it impossible for me to use or get to anything. Edit. I took the HOA and Vendor E to court after months of fighting, keeping records of every detail, and dealing with complete lack of care and skill. I showed all the proof, including requests that were ignored, the lack of the right permits, the clear conflict of interest, the large amounts of water damage, and the possible health risks from asbestos and mold. The court ruled in my favor, recognizing that both the HOA and Vendor E were very careless and didn't do anything. I got a huge settlement that paid for all the repairs, my hotel stays, and extra damages for the pain and trouble it caused me. The HOA board is also in a lot of trouble now. They're being investigated for multiple violations, and some board members could be fired or face legal consequences. 
A close eye is also on vendor E who could lose their license. Everyone in my neighborhood who had to deal with the HOA's lack of competence also won this battle. The board is being held responsible and big changes are coming to make sure this doesn't happen again. The truth has been told. If you want to watch the part two, click the link here. We're very, very glad to see you all in the comments again. Many, many thanks for your support.